I will begin us off as I typically like to do and tend to do with a few reminders so that we just all know what we're doing and then we will get the worship actually happening. So first of all, we would love to know that you all are here because it is wonderful to see you and I'm loving this breeze. Aren't you loving this breeze? Yeah. Oh man. Um, and so the way that we get to know that you are here is if you would please get out your fancy magical smartphone and use the QR code on the back of your bulletin and uh, just register your presence with us using the QR code. Or if you'd just rather not do it that way, you also are most welcome to use a, a green, whatever it's called, card. And our ushers over at the welcome table are happy to bring you a green card for you to just write in your name um, and how many are in your party, in your circle. That would be great, thanks very much. Secondly, if you find that you would like a different chair than the one upon which you are sitting, we do have lots of other chairs over there, and again, our magic ushers would love to help you with that, so just go over to the welcome table and ask for another chair. Um, and thirdly, in your bulletin, you should all have these blue prayer slips. On the prayer slips, um, those of you that are used to this already know the spiel, but in case any, any of you are new or have not remembered this, there are two different sides for writing on the blue sheet. One side is if you have a confidential prayer that you would like to share with the minister so that the minister, be it Reverend John or Reverend Anne, this week will pray, can pray all week for you and for that prayer. Please write that in the confidential side of the blue slip. On the other side, you can write down any prayers that you would like to have shared with the full group today during our prayer time. And Reverend Heather will read that so that we all can share in uh, the prayer for that. Those blue slips will be collected uh, in just a couple of minutes during the prayer. And let's see if any of you finds that you are in need of use of a bathroom. We do have two of them right inside the main door there. So just go there yourselves at will. Uh, then, on September 12th, we will have a regathering of everyone. Our, our It's back together in the fall Sunday. And for that, we're going to have what we have done now for several years in a row, um, the gathering of the waters. So we are inviting everyone to please, if you haven't already, please take one of the small jars over at the welcome table. Take that home with you, and if you're going on a trip, take it with you, and um, fill it with water from wherever you are. And then bring it back with you on September 12th to our service. We will collect the water from everyone who has, who has done so, and have a little ritual of bringing everyone back together symbolically with combining all the waters from all these places. And finally, you all may be there diddling and fiddling and saying, I thought this was the Sunday that Reverend Ann was going to come back to church. Where is she? So, without any further ado... to offer one little note for everyone, please, if you would um, maybe pay close attention to this final announcement before we start the service. And that is, um, let's all keep in mind that because the news recently has been a little bit, a little bit concerning about the Delta variant and about um, how we should be mindful of that, even being vaccinated, um, our worship outdoors, of course, is plenty good. It's really, really great, and that's wonderful. But we were thinking about the fact that there are going to be 80 something of you out there who are all most likely going to want to converge upon our dear Reverend Anne at the end of the service. And maybe that's not such a great idea in terms of everyone going and hugging her because that's going to seem like being in a crowd for her. 
right? And uh, maybe with the pandemic sort of where it is right now, we're going to ask, please do come and, and welcome her and, and uh, be effusive in lots of ways. Can we please not, can we refrain for right now from the hugging and she will, please don't be offended if Anne decides that she would like to wear her mask. It's just a lot of people hugging her and in her space all at one time and we just recommended that maybe that wasn't such a good idea all at once on her first day back. Make sense everybody? You okay with that? Cool. Great. Thank you all so much. And with that, let's have church. You can tell that David was a former Baptist by how soulfully he played how great that works. Give him a round of applause. And please join me in our opening sentences. This is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The sun is shining. There's a wonderful turnout. And Reverend Anne is back in the house. As we get started, as we always do, want to shout out our wonderful worship team, our director of music, Julie Morgan, our accompanist, David Salyers, our choir trio, our incredible ushers, led by the Reverend Heather Cherry, Susan Rich, and Saya, the director of our children's ministry, who just had a birthday, Reverend Karma Cloud. And the young man that brings our service to the world each and every Sunday, Matthew McDonald. And the three guys that arrive here at 8 to make sure that everything is set up, that the audio is working well, Tim Duhamel, Steve Kataya, and Jay Richardson. I'd like to extend a special greeting to anyone who is joining us through Facebook Live. So happy that you are here, as well as any first-time guests that may be with us this morning. You've picked a fantastic Sunday. Uh, please look at the folks that are sharing the lawn with you. Uh, here at SCC, we say that the members of the church are truly the ministers of the church. So if you have a question, just please reach out to someone nearby, for we are all here to serve one another. Friends, we are in the season that the church calls ordinary time. And this is the time when we are invited to experience God in the everyday wonders that surround us. In this time of worship, we can shift our priorities and recognize the expressions of God in our very midst. So let us take a moment and release ourselves from any burdens or distractions and simply center our hearts on God. For we gather here as seekers, not for answers, but for wisdom, not for doctrine, but for a way of life inspired by the radical love of Jesus the Christ. Let us be together now in the spirit of sacred and holy worship. And let this silent pass. 
And please turn to your bulletins and join me in our call to worship. Creator of community. Generous and inclusive friend. Lover of laughter and song. Giver of our daily bread. God, our constant companion, be present in all our sharing as we worship, serve, and celebrate together. we remember that God's love is magnified in community and that it is so good when we share it with one another. So I invite you to please stand as you are able and we are going to do our physically distanced passing of the peace. We do have some first time visitors here this morning so we're going to review it real quick. Hands together prayer position and then bowing down the God in me greets the God in you coming back up opening your arms and then bring it in for that big FCC hug. Amen, amen. And now everyone on this side of the tree, please face this way. And everyone on that side of the tree, please face it that way. And again, hands together, bowing down. The God in me greets the God in you. Arms open up, and then big hug, feeling that FCC love. Look at those beautiful faces. And the last time everyone faced me, and then the first two to three rows, please face the back few rows and hands together, prayer position. Looking at all those wonderful faces. Bowing down, coming back up, arms open wide. And one last hug, amen, amen. Actually, that will not be our last hug. If everyone could face Reverend Ann, and if we could get our arms wide open and then bring it in for a hug, sending all of the fantastic FCC love to Reverend Ann. I have needed that for three months. <laughs> <laughs> We're so happy to have her back. Amen, amen. Yesterday was my birthday. The whole month of August gets to continue to be my birthday because I'm right at the end, right? So I get to claim July and August. Do I have any young ones who want to join me up here? If you young at heart, young ones want to come and show your face to everyone. We haven't seen some of you. You're welcome to come. I have a new young one who I want to introduce everyone to. <laughs> this is Susanna. And she is going to be helping us in Sunday school for the month of August. Yes! Volunteering her summer time to come and be with our community and our little ones. So honorable. It's a delight to have her. So yeah, come on over. I'm going to share something with... Hi, 
Hi, yes, join us. Young at heart and young in age. Come on, stand right here. Stay right here. That's good. That's good. That's close enough. You can stand up there. It's okay. Yeah, hi. What's your name? <laughs> Too much attention. Too much attention. Actually, I need you guys to stand up for me. My friends over here. And Susanna can help me too. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. It's my birthday, but I have a gift for Reverend Ann that we didn't get to give you as your parting gift from the Sunday school because it didn't come. Yes. journey all right you know we have that labyrinth in the in the sanctuary boys yes right and what do you what do you know about what do you think about the labyrinth what is that why do we have that there any idea it's quite close or feel it's close to me. what do you think can you show the mic again why do we have that labyrinth We walk. We walk the labyrinth of life because life is a labyrinth, right? Okay. Yes. So today we're going to walk, and you can come join your brother right here on the. Stay yeah. here, stay here. Stay here. Okay. I'm going to teach you some steps for being on the spiritual path, all right? And anyone else who wants to join us and stand up to do this again, I invite you to do that and repeat. So yeah, take a stand. Come on, let's get on the path, people. Let's get on the spiritual path. All right? So first, I want you to just pick up your feet. Pick up your feet. Take one step at a time. That's it. And repeat after me. I am secure in my path of love. I am secure in my path of love. Are you stepping over there, boys? You're leading the way here. All right? Next, I want you to reach up to the sky and bring your knees up. Bring your hands to your knees. We're going to bring this potential, right? Yeah, uh-huh. I believe in my divine potential to co-create with God. Yes. That's it. Bring it down. Activate those hearts. Now I want you to reach your hands out in front of you or up above you and bring it right here to your belly, okay? I accept God's love. into your body. We have to embody what we believe. All right? Now, a little higher. Let me see if we can just get a little sway. I am passionate about my faith. I am passionate about my faith. Yes. Faith moves like the ocean. Be the ocean. Right? Like a river rolling. That is. Let's hear it again. I am passionate about my faith. We have to embody what we believe. Now, let's come into our chest. Open that up. I want you to bring here. I, yes, ready? I am clear about my purpose. 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 As a person of faith. As a person of faith. Yes. Now, give us some shoulders. Give us some shoulders. I am proud of who I am. I am proud of who look I am. Look around, look at each other. Come on. I am proud of who I am. I am proud of who I am. And then I want you to turn and nod and nod and nod and simply say, I say yes to peace. I say yes to peace. I invite the peace of God in my life. I invite the peace of God in my life. I am complete. And so we are on this beautiful labyrinth of life, right? On the path, full of potential, full of power, divine power, 
passionate about what we believe in, yes, right? Purposeful with what we do and how we share that faith. Proud of who we are. Perfect love flowing through our veins at all times. And bringing peace into the world. So, thank you God for this path. Thank you for all the intersections along the way. May we continue to be aware of our footsteps, of our heartbeats, and of all the other beautiful people on this path with us. Let's walk it together. Amen. 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 Let us pray. So we turn our hearts in loving awareness to your divine presence that is within and around us. We hold in our prayers so many who are in need of spiritual, physical, or emotional healing. We pray for Dillis' son. We pray for his continued growth, happiness, and his community of support. We pray for Joe, who recently had heart bypass surgery. We pray for the family of Gloria, who passed away last week. We lift up prayers for Jesus, who is taking his high school equivalency test. We offer prayers of healing for May Beth as she continues to heal after her fall. And we pray for Lori, who is battling cancer. God in your mercy. With great joy, we offer prayers of gratitude for Reverend Anne's return. We can't wait to hear about her sabbatical, and we look forward to the season ahead. God, in your mercy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for a successful youth group service trip. We are so grateful for the teens from FCC and Union Congregational Church who served at Fresh Kills Park, worked in a community garden with Jose German, and distributed food at Tony's Kitchen. We also offer our thanks to the adult chaperones who volunteered their time and who offer so much support to our young people. God in your mercy. Yeah. Holy One, wherever two or more are gathered in your name, we know that you are there, so you are here, healing us, inspiring us, and gently redirecting us so that we may see the world as you do and love it with your love. So in this time of prayer, we lift up the prayers of our congregation. Uh, please pray for deep healing for our country, our families, our community, and our world. Prayers for our daughter who is undergoing a medical procedure tomorrow. Prayers for my friend Rosemary on the loss this week of her husband of 59 years, Jack. Prayers of thanks for Reverend John and everyone making these summer services possible. And thank you, God, for the experience of wholeness and health in body, mind, and spirit. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Having shared our prayers aloud to God, let us now rest in the silence of our hearts as the singing bowl rings.
truly the mother and the father of us all. You have heard our prayers, both those that we have said aloud and those that we have kept in the silence of our hearts. Hear us now as we say the prayer that your son and our brother Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. takes all of us and our variety of gifts in order to be the beloved community that we strive to be together. And one of the ways that we can support our church is through our financial support. And there are several ways that you can give. You can give through the FCC giving page on our website. You can use the Give Plus mobile app, or you can text your gift. All details on this are in your bulletin or on the FCC website. If you would like to make a donation by check or cash, you can do so now. The ushers will come around. And again, thank you very much to all who contribute. And now it is time for this morning's announcements. And batting first, telling us about the upcoming New Jersey Jackals ball game from the ushers team, Rich Gilford. Good morning. Um, just a reminder, August 28th, 6 o'clock, Yogi Berra Stadium. Tickets are $5. It's a great deal. Look at this as a, an extended coffee hour away from FCC. You don't have to know anything about baseball. You don't have to, you know, you just, just show up, have a good time. Kids will have a good time. They can run around and get tired so you can put them to bed pretty quick. And there'll be fireworks. So check with me after the, after the uh, uh, service. Uh, send me an email, there'll be a note about how to get a hold of me. If you're thinking, keep thinking. If you want to go, tell me. And uh, we'll get you set up. And uh, that's about it. Thanks. <laughs> and next up, our cleanup hitters from the FCC Executive Council, Liz Donald and Elaine Wells. such a special day to have Reverend Ann back with us. But before she gets a, her welcome from Elaine, I want to thank a few people. Um, John did thank everybody, but I don't think you can thank this group too much. Throughout the summer months, while Ann's been away, everyone stepped up, big time. I have to acknowledge full-heartedly Reverend John, Julie Marvin, and David Sowers. Every week they put together a wonderful, enriching, inspiring worship service for us. And with the added challenge that almost every week there was a new preacher with a new tape and a new style. Everybody has pitched in and made this such a wonderful summer for us. Uh, and also, we couldn't, we couldn't say enough about our singers. 
Today we have Eliz and Julie, who does double duty all the time, Vivian, our volunteer vocalist. We also thank Vaughn and Hans for their contributions throughout the summer. She's doing her job, so she won't hear this, but our thanks to Reverend Karl McLeod, finding ways to involve our youngest through our, her slogan, Faith, Courage, and Compassion, FCC. A special thanks to Reverend Heather Cherry, who not only provided pastoral care throughout the summer, but is our usher coordinator extraordinaire. And again, I will thank all those who made our outdoor setup possible and our indoor very often too. We thank Jay Richardson, Michael Harney, Steve Kataya, and Matthew McDonald. <laughs> Set up, sound, and Facebook Live, and ready to turn on a dime if the weather demanded it. And all the volunteers in the congregation who read, who sang, who did everything, who helped with all the projects we had going on. I'm not gonna name them because I'll leave somebody out and I don't wanna do that. So you know who you are and thank you all so much. <laughs> Two of our worship team will now be taking their vacations. John is going away for a few weeks. He leaves on Wednesday, he'll be back on the 24th. Uh, David is, go David Salyers, all right, get your, don't be envious, we are Christians here, is going to spend a month in Austria, but he will be back with us on September 5th. So, yeah, poor thing. He has to go all the way to Austria. All right, one more thing. Before Reverend Ann left on her sabbatical, I strongly advised Reverend John, admonished him even, keep things simple. Don't take on anything new. Cut back a little. I think you can all see how that worked out. <laughs> However, as moderator, I want to personally thank Reverend John for his active participation behind the scenes with plans and ideas for the future, as well as taking on the day-to-day -day operations of FCC. I can assure you that the business of the church goes on with its own challenges and decisions, from dealing with developers to staying current on the best practices for COVID protocols. As you would expect, John has taken those responsibilities very seriously and has done his best to keep things in good order for Ann's return. John, enjoy your time away. Come back to us refreshed and ready to hit the ground running. You and I both know there will be new and exciting work ahead. Thank you. It has been, and really, Reverend Ann, this is directed to you so far by that. But, yeah. <laughs> I can hear you better when oh, you face that okay, way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, it has been, as we all know, a really intense three months. At the end of July, we bade a temporary farewell to Reverend Ann, sending her off for three months of rest, restoration, and renewal. We couldn't hug goodbye, and we couldn't send her off with a rousing choir anthem, and we weren't all sure what life would look like when she got back. Uh, during that time, we've worn masks, we've taken them off, we've put them back on again. <laughs> um, we've met outside on our beautiful lawn and cautiously moved indoors when the weather didn't cooperate. We celebrated Juneteenth, we celebrated Pride Sunday, and so much more. We had amazing guest preachers who made us laugh, cry, think, and even stand up and dance. Our worship team, ushers, and setup crew kept things flowing smoothly. And we were blessed to have Reverend John, only the best associate pastor on the planet, <laughs> to lead us to use his amazing meteorological predictive talents to make spur of the moment worship decisions as to whether we should be indoors or outdoors. Um, even though last week I gave you bad advice, but you, <laughs> luckily you, you followed your heart. Um, 
and most of all, to inspire us, to keep us safe, and to never let us forget that we're back. Reverend Ann, we can't wait to hear what you did, to see some artwork, to hear about your labyrinth explorations, to see your face, and to hear your voice. We welcome you back as a congregation that missed you, prayed for you, and so looked forward to your return. But also, as a congregation that thrived, worked, and loved each other through this always strange time. And we are so glad that we can finally welcome you back with open arms and albeit virtual hugs. <laughs> Reverend Ann, on behalf of the council, the congregation, and the community we serve, our scripture reading is from Psalms 121. Listen to the wisdom of God. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. She will not let your foot be moved. She who keeps you will not slumber. She who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. She will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. May God's wonder be revealed to us through the mystery of these words. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Where are we? Of course, we're on the FCC front lawn, but what I mean is where are we as individuals? a community, a country, a planet. What is the best path forward? How can we find our way? The philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein once said that his aim in philosophy was to show the fly the way out of the fly bottle. Repeatedly, it bangs its head against the glass until finally, exhausted, 
it gives up. Yet the bottle has been open the whole time. The one thing the fly forgot to do was look up. Yes, it's true. We often bang our heads again and again until we finally shift our focus and find our way. This week, 20 teenagers from FCC and Union Congregational Church, including Kenya and Matthew, shifted their focus and they dedicated themselves to the act of service. We began the week Monday morning at a converted landfill in Staten Island. You gotta hand it to these kids. Most people do not want to spend their summer vacation at a converted landfill in Staten Island. Today, it is called Fresh Kills Park. Have you ever heard of it? Fresh Kills is one of the world's largest landfills, 2,200 acres. When we arrived, our tour guide took us up to the top of a hill. As we took in the view, she told us that this was once like a battlefield. If we were standing here two decades ago, she said, there would be trash for as far as the eye could see. For 53 years, day after day, garbage was transported in tugboats and dumped here. At its peak of operation in 1986, this land received 29,000 tons of residential waste per day and continued to receive trash until 2001. 20 years ago, you looked out over thousands of acres of toxic, steaming trash. Then she asked us questions that we didn't know the answer to. What will we do next? Will the rich continue to dump their garbage on the poor? Can our planet sustain the two billion tons of waste that human beings create each year? As we considered these sobering questions, our focus wandered. I saw some of the kids hanging their head. A few of them checked their phone. Seeing this, I remembered something that my wife Allison told me. Every time we look down, we put 60 pounds of pressure on our neck and our shoulders. Then my mind shifted. I thought about Jeff Bezos blasting <laughs> off into space, spending $5.5 billion for a four minute trip. I thought about the coverage of his return his exuberance, his cowboy hat, his search for new places to trash after we've used up and ruined our planet. We all stood on that hill, looking out on this battlefield, but what we saw was no longer a trash site. For the past 20 years, residents of Staten Island, leaders in engineering, science, business, and politics have worked together to reclaim the garbage heap and transform it into an environmentally safe, sustainable park. It's vast and it's beautiful and it's a testament to what we can do when we work together. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Hebrew Bible, the book of Psalms. In it, we hear the cries of our spiritual ancestors those who knew danger and yet stayed connected to God and each other to find a way forward. Like the Israelites wandering in the desert, Moses and the Israelites had fled from danger and now they're wandering in the wilderness fighting for their lives. And one day they are attacked by the Amalekites. As the battle begins, Moses, staff in hand, climbs to the top of a hill. He finds a vantage point from which he can connect with and support the people as they fight for their lives. As the battle wages on, Moses finds that as long as he lifts up his hands, the Israelites prevail. 
But as soon as he lowers his hands, the Amalekites prevail. Moses stands there for hours, maybe days. He is exhausted, has difficulty standing up, has difficulty keeping his arms up. And then the scripture tells us, when Moses' hands become weary, Aaron and Hur take a stone and place it under him so that Moses is able to sit. Then they hold up his hands, one on each side, and they keep his hands steady until sunset. In this critical, transforming, collective moment for the Israelites, Aaron and her join in and support Moses in rallying the people. We need each other. We cannot do it alone. In 1875, an amateur archaeologist, Marcelo de Santula, began excavating the ground in a cave on the north coast of Spain. After four years of digging, he still hadn't found anything. One day, he took his nine-year-old daughter, Maria, with him to the site. While he was carefully searching through the rubble, Maria wandered deeper into the cave. And then looking up, she said, Look, Papa, oxen. She had made one of the greatest discoveries of prehistoric art of all time, the magnificent Altamira cave paintings, between 25 and 30,000 years old, an unprecedented finding that took another 21 years to authenticate and be accepted. On the one day that this archaeologist shared his work with the one that he loved, the discovery was made. It was the fresh perspective of his child that helped him find what he was looking for. We cannot do it alone. For the past three months, I have had the privilege of leading our congregation. The experience of working and collaborating with each of you has lifted my head and helped me to see. I have enormous appreciation for you, Reverend Aaron, for the work that you have done over 10 years, for the work that you are still doing to build this community, and to model what servant leadership is all about. To every member of this congregation, thank you. I have learned so much, and I have seen God working through each of you to respond to each new moment. We need music that stops people on South Fullerton. Julie Morgan. We need ushers as the Winds are blowing, and it looks like we're going to have to go into the congregation. Reverend Heather Cherry is on the case. There is a big decision to make for the church. Liz Donald is always waiting on the other end of the line. Help! Our basement has flooded for the third time this month. Jay Richardson is there, willing and able to help. Oh look, we have changed our COVID protocols. Again, the CDC is offering new advice. Medical professionals in the congregation step in and allow, allow us to answer the change. We have a virtual congregation now that needs to be reached on Sunday mornings. Matthew McDonald films our service each and every Sunday. Help, we need another reader. Lisa Marie, Peter Wirt, always step up. We want thousands of rainbow-colored streamers during confirmation. Julie Matz makes it happen. And then help, we need another guest preacher. Reverend Althea Spencer-Miller always steps in and inspires.
And I could go on and on and on because I love this congregation. And I am so inspired by the ways that you step up and out and you serve. And that there's been this wonderful uh, attunement, an emotional contagion, a joy that comes when we lift each other up and we do what needs to be done. At the end of last week's youth service trip, I thanked one of the mentors on the trip, an 86-year-old woman from Union Congregational Church named Grace, for the sacrifice that she made on behalf of our kids. Sacrifice, Grace said. Every morning, I begin my day by looking to the sky and asking God, what would you have me to do? When you ask me to help with the kids, I found my answer. So there we are in Fresh Hills Park on top of a hill. At the end of her talk, our tour guide said, look at all this green space, three times larger than Central Park, a landscape engineered by a group of people who had expertise in soil and infrastructure, an entire ecosystem healed by this group of volunteers. What was once a dangerous landfill is now a refuge of wildlife, recreation, science, arts, and education. As we began our way down the hill, our tour guide told us how we could contribute. Here's your service site, she said, pointing to the parking lot. See all these weeds coming up through the cracks in the asphalt? Pull them up. So there we were, 20 kids, three chaperones, working on our hands and knees on hot asphalt in the blazing summer sun. I took a look at the kids who were immersed in the work, raising their heads to joke with one another, one taking a picture of a bumblebee that landed on her glove. The joy was contagious. Back in the van, I asked them what they thought of the day. I never thought I could have so much fun pulling weeds from asphalt on the top of a converted landfill. It's true, we did have fun. Coming together, climbing a hill to gain a fresh perspective, we heard how a group of people worked together to clean up a gigantic mess and transform it into an environmental offering. Then we knelt down in the hot summer sun and offered our help to it. Together, we find our way. May it be so. Amen. Pray for us as we move this table.
and all who love him. Is a table of sharing with the poor of the world, with whom Jesus identified himself. It is, a, it is a table of communion with the earth, in which Christ becomes incarnate against the rules and expectations of his time. Jesus crossed the boundaries and invited everyone to share in the abundance of God. So join us in this moment of communion, those who have much faith and those who would like to have more, those who have been here often and those who have not been here for a long time, those who have tried to follow Jesus and those who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet with him here. And so we affirm, God is with you. And also with you. Our hearts are open to God and to one another. Our hearts are open to God and to one another. <laughs> open your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the giver of all gifts. It is good and right to give God our heartfelt thanksgiving and praise. My friends, this is a story which belongs to all of us, so I invite you to help me in telling it anew. I will say a line, and then I ask you to repeat it back to me. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks to God, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so when we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Please join me. Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As the members of the church are truly the ministers of the church, I ask you to please raise your hands in a sign of blessing so that we may consecrate the elements together. Companion in Christ, as we break this bread, a fragile knife, remind us that our breaking down becomes our breaking through. As we eat this living bread and drink the new cup of resurrection, let us celebrate the cause of Christ, our liberator and sustainer, who transforms, renews, and empowers us to serve the world. Breathe your spirit upon us and upon these simple elements, that they may be heaven's food and drink for us, renewing, sustaining, and making us whole, that we may be your body on earth, loving and caring for the world. For it is through the broken bread that we participate in the body of Christ. And it is through the cup of blessing that we participate in the new life which Christ brings. These, my friends, are the gifts of God for the people of God. In remembrance of Jesus' radical hospitality, our communion table is an open table. All are welcome, including people of all faiths and children of all ages. No doubt is too strong, no faith is too weak to participate in the feast of God. And we may lower our hands. Thank you. Reverend Phyllis, Reverend Heather, and I will now bring the communion packs to you. Please let us know if you would like a gluten-free option. And when we arrive at your circle, please take one of the packs from the basket. We ask that you do not consume the communion elements right away, but please wait until everyone has received the elements so that we can share in the sacrament together.
please take out your communion bread? And lift it up with me. The body of Christ is given for you. And now please take out your, looks like a half and half communion cup and open it up. The cup of salvation is poured out for you. Amen. And so we pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Holy God, in gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Not to live as changed, changed people. Trinity prayer and cannot remain the same. As much of us expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us, let us become heralds of your new kingdom. Amen. Join me in our closing commission. The Spirit of God is upon us. God has anointed us to bear good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, to open the prisons of those who are bound. Let us go forth in the name of Christ to bring peace into broken relationships, healing to alienated persons, and justice into oppressive structures. Amen. And it is, is this, how are we doing? <laughs> How's this one? There it is, there it is. My heart is full to overflowing. Last night I felt like the kid before going back to school after summer break. I laid this dress out on my bed before <laughs> I got up this morning. What am I going to wear when I come back to my beloved family? Next week, I will be leading worship, I will be preaching, and I will be sharing what I can. It's going to be a process of my sabbatical experience. This morning, I know the thanks have abounded, and I will be having a chance to personally thank so many. Um, but because Reverend John is going to be going away, and he's going to be thankfully going away, no one has deserved a vacation more than this man. I just need to tell you that every, everything I have heard Everything that people have said about how you've stepped up your profound generosity and talents and spiritual courage and stamina, I am not the least bit surprised. I knew uh, that John's leadership would more than make up for my absence, and it has been a strange time to be absent, I know that for sure. And so I am eager to hear all of your stories, the stories of this congregation during these last three months, and so very much looking forward to what this next chapter is going to be. We are in such a time of profound transition as a community, as an institution, as individual hearts, and I cannot imagine a more prophetic, compassionate, inspirational place in which for us to be living out these next days, but this one together. And so I am beyond touched 
by all of the words this morning and basically just to see what clearly has been a congregation continuing to thrive and serve and love and grow while I have been taking my rest. And so I am just so very grateful. And so if, as we end worship, let us share a benediction. For our time of worship here and now has ended, but our service in the world has just begun. And so as we go forth into this day, this week, let us be there to lift our arms up, to show that way through, and to help each other hold those arms up, because we do it together. And to quote that amazing grace, who John quoted in his sermon, let us wake up each morning saying, God, what would you have me do today? That is my benediction for us this morning. And so as we go forward, let us go knowing that we travel in the love of God, the peace of Christ, the strength and the power of that Holy Spirit, this moment and forevermore. Amen.